going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yennefer. I am a recent interior design graduate. I'm here in hopes to teach you guys something new on interior design. Or if you're looking to renovate a space of your own at home, I'm here to give you guys some pointers. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to construct a digital mood board. And in my next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to construct a digital presentation board. In the design world, they are considered two very different things. Uh, and I'll explain in just a little bit, so please stick around. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I read a client's Pinterest board, kind of organize their thoughts into the said mood board and presentation boards. So without further ado, I'm gonna just jump right in. I guess I could start off by saying what the difference is between a digital mood board and a digital presentation board. A mood board is a visual tool for your client that is usually made up of a collection of images or concepts that tell a story. It's a good starting point for your client because there's room to make mistakes. It's okay to switch things up a little bit. You're just throwing ideas and nothing is set in stone just yet. The mood board usually sets the direction for the project. It gives the client a bit of trust and comfort knowing that you have been listening to them knowing that you understand what they were trying to communicate to you through words or pictures of their own and sort of fulfills your job as the designer to organize these thoughts and ideas and put them on this mood board. Now, presentation boards get into the specifics. You're gonna be portraying exactly what you've chosen for the client. This includes furniture pieces, uh, flooring, uh, textiles, appliances, uh, it shows the exact location of where all of these are going along with the architectural details. The presentation board should be an almost finished or completely finished byproduct of your design, of your game plan. Okay, so now that we know what the difference is between a mood board and a presentation board, we're gonna jump right into building this mood board. There's really no right or wrong way when creating a mood board, but I feel like there is definitely a successful way in creating a mood board. You have to be mindful of what kind of story you wanna tell to your client. Uh, luckily, I have a beautiful selection of Pinterest board photos here selected by a good friend of mine, Song. She plans on moving out soon with her boyfriend and is giving me the chance to decorate her own place. Immediately after opening Song's Pinterest board, I am reminded of Athena Caldrone with the obvious earth tones and modern rustic touches she's known for. I say modern rustic because usually when you think rustic, uh, you think cabin in the woods, uh, barn style cottages. Uh, Song's collection here has that bulky furniture and old distressed wood textures and features that rustic design is known for but uh, just without the brick floors and the farm implements that would make it look more traditional rustic. I actually did a little bit more research on uh, this type of style and this type of style is actually called wabi-sabi, which in Japanese it translates to a beauty of things imperfect, a beauty of things modest and humble, a beauty of things unconventional. Characteristics include asymmetry, simplicity, modesty, and great respect for the natural object. So a lot of organic shapes, clean lines. I am also noticing here a lot of uh, plushy furniture and leather textures, uh, a lot of moody colors, usually only shown in um, the furniture pieces and artwork. So her walls are going to be staying white, I'm guessing, or a very light beige. Or maybe she may not even be painting these walls. These organic shapes are usually mixed with a lot of clean lines. She's really liking that minimalistic style. The feelings from these photos is very calm, neutral, warm, cozy. It's uh, really easy to read her Pinterest board actually because a lot of her pictures are very cohesive. Uh, it's really obvious that she wants touches of that greenery. Uh, she wants to bring all those nature elements in. So now that I've read her Pinterest board, it's kind of obvious that she wants to stick with a neutral color palette uh, with a lot of black statement pieces. Uh, she wants to bring a lot of the greenery inside. 
uh, bringing the outside in. She is very, very fond of plants. I know that she is. She is a plant mom and I'm sure she's gonna wanna display all her plants in a beautiful manner. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this mood board. I did construct this mood board beforehand, so I may be moving a little fast, but I'm gonna be showing you guys what my thought process was. Overall though, I think it took me about an hour to construct this mood board. The tool that I'm using today is Photoshop. Other tools you can use are things like Canva, I know Canva has like a bunch of templates you could use. Milanote has a bunch of templates you could use. PowerPoint or Google Docs, anything you could bring photos in and collage them basically. But today I'm gonna be using Photoshop. I use Photoshop mainly because you can cut pictures and collage them in so many different ways. I'm going to be using a vertical 11 by 17 file. and open up the collection of images that I've already screenshotted. So one of my biggest tips is just bring in all the photos that you want to include, even if you may not be sure that you're gonna use them just yet. Now the reason for this is because you don't wanna think too much of the placement just yet. You wanna play around with the composition and see how the pictures look beside each other. See if they collide or complement each other. Now I'm gonna be using some pictures from her Pinterest board here, but typically mood boards are usually pictures that evoke a feeling. They're not necessarily pictures of finished spaces just yet because they may confuse the client. You can definitely draw inspiration from these finished um, interior design photos, but I wouldn't say it's ideal to have them in your mood board. Now when I say pictures that evoke a feeling, I mean um, like for example this uh, picture of these wooden stools here. It's a good textured picture. It definitely gives off that rustic feel. Um, so try to stick with pictures that give off the feeling that she wants to evoke of the space. They're not necessarily pictures of furniture pieces that you're selecting. Another good example is this picture of these textured bowls. That imperfection that we talked about in the Wabi Sabi design, finding beauty in that imperfection. Reading Song's Pinterest board, I'm feeling like in these spaces you want to curl up and have a cup of coffee. That's why I have this picture of this cup of coffee on the bedside table. There's definitely those imperfect features and elements in the coffee cup and the uh, little plate that it sits on. I know that she's loving that rubber plant. I know she's talked about it before. She really admires the look of a rubber plant, so I'm gonna include that in there as well. Looking at Song's Pinterest board, I'm also noticing a lot of these repeated linen textures, so I'm gonna include that in there. Um, I'm also noticing black accents, so I'm gonna include a bit of that textured black. Quick Photoshop tip, actually, is that if you want your, to turn your picture, you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you picture at perfect degree angles, you have to hold down shift and then start flipping it because you won't get that straight picture if you just start to freehand rotate it. So you have to hold down shift before you rotate your picture. So I'm just gonna pull the rest of the images I'm gonna be using. So at this point, I've shrunken down my photos and organized them to a point where there is an obvious flow. I put all my heavy uh, photos up at the top and all the lighter uh, photos here at the bottom. Now what this is called is showing hierarchy through your photos. Uh, I highly suggest looking for photos or including photos that don't have much visual noise. When I say visual noise, I mean not too busy. So maybe you can pick one photo that has a lot of visual noise, like this one that I have here, and then work from there. So uh, it's easy to read, there's good flow, and it avoids the clash between each photo. So you want to keep it minimal, don't be too specific. So I've layered all my textures and colors into one area on the uh, mood board. This way it's obvious what they look like beside each other. Uh, you could have them spread out all over the board, that's your choice, I think. 
they look a lot better if they're in one place and it's a bit more organized that way. So I guess my next step is to create an obvious border all around my board here. Uh, this could either be half an inch or an inch or three inches. It's really up to you But there should definitely be uh, an alignment between your images if that makes sense now this picture here Didn't really sit right with me. I feel like a lot of The board was being eaten up already. I want to give my client uh, room to breathe on this board so I'm gonna cut out the background and just keep uh, the leaves of the plant this creates that really cool layered effect that you usually don't get from uh, using uh, other applications like Canva or PowerPoint uh, Photoshop gives you an advantage here by cutting these pictures by including negative spaces here it reduces that visual noise I was talking about now you want to be cautious of the visual noise that is in those images and the visual noise that you are creating by combining all of these images. So uh, we're gonna be using the quick selection tool here or you can use the magic wand tool to make it a little easier. I'm not gonna get into too much depth on what these do but I'm gonna be using the magic wand to select just the leaves Okay, so now that we have all of our leaves selected in this photo or all of our shapes in your case or whatever you've selected, you're gonna right click and select inverse. That way it selects the background and you could go ahead and hit delete and it deletes the background. Sorry guys, I'm really bad at explaining uh, Photoshop. I wanna make them a little smaller, so I'm gonna hit command T to transform and just size it. Put it in that obvious border I made. And I kind of want it overlapping the images here to give it that really cool layered effect. Okay, so now that there's an obvious border and the spacing in between my images are the same, I can go ahead and include uh, color swatches that resonate with the pictures that I have here and it's kind of a color palette basically. So what I'm gonna do is create an ellipse to form a circle or a square, it's whatever you're comfortable with. If you want a perfect circle on Photoshop, you're gonna have to hit that shift key and then start drawing that circle. So now that we have our perfect circle here, I'm gonna change it to no stroke and then the fill is going to be the color that I want. I have a collection of colors here, but I'm only gonna use like six, um, three dark ones, and then three really light ones. So we're gonna start with our dark one first. So we're gonna hit that fill color as, as black. I like to layer the color swatches over the photos. I think it's more aesthetically pleasing that way. I think it looks really nice beside your pictures. And that way it fills those little empty gaps that you have in between your pictures. We're gonna hit our Command T so it could transform and then hit this Warp tool. You're gonna go over to Custom and pick the Twist effect. It's up to you if you wanna do this. I chose to do this because it really resonates with my board. I'm continuing imperfect shapes and organic shapes throughout my board. So to avoid repeating all those steps, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. And then in order to change the color of the swatch, you're just gonna click on it and click on the color swatch you wanna make it. So I'm gonna make it this dark brown so it looks like a grade eight. And then the next one, I'm gonna just repeat my steps, Command C, Command V to create the same exact shape and make it a lighter color that I have here. I believe it's this one. Okay, so now that we've finished our color swatches that resonate with our board, um, our last step, or at least my last step, is going to be uh, to include text. Just in case the client's having a little bit of trouble understanding uh, or reading the mood board, it's good to include some words. I'm gonna include the new word that we learned today, wabi-sabi. I'm 
And then we're gonna include some more words over here. And I think that pretty much sums up this quick little mood board that I've created. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I am more than happy to answer any questions or if you have any suggestions on how to make a mood board better, I am all ears, but I did the best I could here in explaining and again, if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video.